Mike, tell us about uh, some of the exciting developments in small reactor technology, particularly the program that Britain is looking at uh, going down the road of building multiple small modular reactors and the amount of power they could get. How could that sort of thing be part of the Australian energy mix, which would also include coal, gas and renewables? Well, I think the first point you hit, James, is really important that with small modular reactors, they can be part of the energy mix. They can actually complement renewable energy. They can go on old coal fire plants and replace them quite effectively. But the key point, the future of nuclear power is not based on the past, which are these large scale gigawatt size plants, which are over cost, over budget, and really aren't the right solution for most of the, of the world's nations looking for nuclear power. What a small modular reactor will give you is first and foremost factory built like an aircraft. Mm. The second thing it gives you is I can tailor the amount of power I need to the offtake. So in other words, if my main industry is producing iron, my main industry is data centers, I can tailor the energy to the offtake. And finally, and, and maybe most importantly, with small modular reactors, we can actually attract private capital. This is a government run mm. industry that's upside down. And what we wanna do is attract private capital so that we can commercialize, innovate, productionize, and make nuclear power affordable down the cost curve. And I think that is the most important thing. And the final point I'll make, and you mentioned Britain, Britain really is on the front line of replacing its nuclear power industry. And their company Rolls-Royce has developed a light water reactor at 475 megawatts which will be available not only to build in their country, and they're looking at upwards of 24 gigawatts of power in new nuclear, but it will be exportable to nations such as Australia. We've got a lot of critics of nuclear energy in this country who say it's just not viable for Australia. The cost would be exorbitant. Is it viable for a country the size of Australia? And how quickly, if we started today, would we have access to cheap, reliable energy? So I, I think Australia is, is probably one of the best countries on the planet for nuclear power. Yes. And I'll start first because of your massive amounts of uranium that you have as a natural resource. Second, because you have such expansive land, we can tailor the energy for where I need the industry to be powered. And that really gives you a, a quite a, a great advantage. And then also you, you're a country in the G20. You're a country that has industries that are important to the rest of the planet. And without nuclear power, you're not going to be able to, to power those industries of the future. And, and if you really want to get out of fossil fuel, the only way to do it is with nuclear power. And Micah, just quickly before we go, um, what you say is obviously uh, clear thinking and intellectually uh, up there. At the same time, we have any number of um, billionaires in Australia and state premiers and others rushing around spending taxpayers' dollars on something called green hydrogen. Um, give us your thoughts. Uh, literally, taxpayers are funding this nonsense, this science fiction uh, garbage into the future, and political and business companies are putting their money there rather than nuclear. Give us your thoughts on green hydrogen. Well, green hydrogen has a role, but it is not going to replace that baseload power. And obviously to produce green hydrogen, you have to produce it with clean energy. And because wind and solar is so intermittent, it can't produce green hydrogen at a price point that makes it even smart for Australia, let alone exporting it to other countries. So again, if you want to produce green hydrogen, the best way to produce it is with nuclear power because it gives you that always on baseload. But I, I share your concerns that there are way too many people that are pursuing these niche industries of the future at the expense of what you really need right now, which is baseload power to attract the industries of the future. And this energy poverty issue that we're seeing globally right now, it was not caused by the pandemic or Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. It was caused by bad energy policy that was driven by climate policy for the last seven years. And I think we need to wake up to the fact that Russia and China are looking at energy geopolitically while we're looking at energy as decarbonization, and we mm. have to fix it. Mm. Yes, it's become our religion. It's their weapon of war. Mike Hewitt, so much great to chat to you. Thanks so much for coming on Outsiders this morning.